We are back with Group A, and we have the final Group A wild card as well. We meet the koala. Let's talk to Masked Singer. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my recap and reaction video for The Masked Singer. This is uh, the Transformers Night, uh, which I, I'm not sure what the story is that, with this. Transformers does not have a movie coming out, um, but uh, whatever. They just try to tack any old theme on. Um, and so all of the songs performed tonight were from one of the many Transformers films. It's a pretty wide range, really, of songs, but whatever. And then they have Optimus Prime and uh, Bumblebee there giving out the, the clues. So, uh, all right. But uh, before we launch into any of the specifics here with tonight's show, uh, thank you for finding this video. Welcome to Dan Reviews. We do these Masked Singer recaps every single week that there is a new episode. There's a few more this season. Uh, not too many, though, because I think uh, we're going to only have one more night with Group A and then Group B will have two more episodes, and then we may be into the finale. I'm not sure. Um, so just a few more weeks. But yes, we have uh, back again the Ugly Sweater, the Starfish, the Lovebird, the Goldfish, and then newcomer to Group A, the Wild Card, the Koala. Uh, we already had one unmasking from Group A that first week. That was Kevin Hart, um, which uh, was basically, I mean, it was so obvious it was him uh, because of that voice. But I'm sure he only he signed like a one-episode contract um, because they knew he would be un unmasked. But tonight, there are two unmaskings. So we'll figure that all out. Uh, so please consider subscribing uh, to the channel here. We'd love to have you aboard there. Uh, like this video and comment below. All of your comments, of course, help me um, try to decide which direction I'm going in for my guests. Uh, you know, am I on track or am I, you know, way off the mark? And uh, with one of these contestants, you definitely steered me in a different direction, uh, one that I had not thought of previously uh, when we last met Group A. So uh, with that in mind, um, yeah, like I said, it's the Transformers night. So that's sort of the, the theme of the evening. Um, we started out with the Starfish. Uh, so we will start there as well here uh, on, on my review. Uh, she said, while other kids played in the sandbox, I played with a jukebox. And it opened my ears to Eric Clapton, Fleetwood Mac, and, of course, Green Day. And she ended up singing a Green Day song, but, I, the of course, I think I, I have an idea for that uh, clue. I've joined, I have joined a band um, and toured the nation, and we saw uh, the word live at that point. She says, I dabbled in many tide pools. And then she sang 21 Guns by Green Day, which was uh, from one of the Transformers movies. Um, and then her post-song clue from, uh, I guess, Optimus Prime, uh, said she's a real teammate. She has earned awards as part of a talented group. Um, and it's worth pointing out, whoever they got to do the voice for uh, Optimus Prime, there's I, I don't think there's any way it's Liam Neeson, right? Liam Neeson does it in the movies. Um, is he really recording a bunch of vocal tracks for the masked singer? I mean, I guess... Uh, it's a pretty easy gig, right? You just He probably has a, a home studio at this point after COVID. A lot of people do. Um, and he maybe... It's, maybe it is Liam Neeson. I don't know. But it's whoever it is, it sounds a lot like Liam Neeson. Um, but Nick Cannon didn't like... Of course, if he thanked Liam Neeson, I guess it would sort of take away the illusion that the Transformers are real or whatever. But all right. Uh, so whatever. But it sounded very much like Liam Neeson. I don't think it was. But uh, anyway, so... Uh, the guesses from the panel all were from Saturday Night Live. Uh, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, and Maya Rudolph. And last time, uh, two of the three were also from Saturday Night Live. They were different people, though. Sherry O'Terry and Molly Shannon. Uh, the only panel guest so far that is not from SNL is Catherine O'Hara, who uh, actually had her own sketch comedy show, uh, SCTV, up in Canada with... Eugene Levy and John Candy um, and Martin Short and uh, Joe Flaherty, who we just lost last week. Um, so all of these people are, are sketch comedy people. I believe that uh, this is who I thought it was the first week, um, which is definitely somebody that has won awards as part of a talented group. Not a sketch comedy group, though, not SNL. She has won awards as part of the Office. I believe they have won uh, SAG Awards for Best Ensemble. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but th they've definitely won some awards as a group. I think this is Kate Flannery, who plays uh, on The Office. She plays Meredith. And so I think last time we, we had a lot of clues with that. Um, you know, the, the 50 billion streamed, uh, 50 billion minutes over one year streamed. That's The Office on Netflix. Um, but uh, 
Green, <clears throat> Green Day, excuse me, I'm thinking because she is Irish, maybe, you know, Green, St. Patrick's Day, Irish. Um, so when she says, of course, Green Day, um, you know, that, that kind of stuck out to me. Okay, why would she be saying, of course, Green Day? I'm thinking maybe the, the whole Irish thing. But in addition to that, um, I've toured the nation. She has toured the nation, maybe not with a musical group, um, but she was part of a touring company of the Brady Bunch. Uh, they did like a, a Brady Bunch uh, revival kind of thing. And they, and they do these from time to time. Right now, there's one with the Golden Girls um, where it's, well, there's a couple different ones. One is drag queens doing Golden Girls episodes. And the other, um, I think it's just old older women. But, um, but she played Alice on uh, the touring company of the Brady Bunch live. Um, and she also has toured the, the country with Jane Lynch. Uh, in a musical duo called The Lampshades, and they do, I guess they do kind of parody songs or whatever. Um, so, uh, look, uh, all of these clues still confirmed it for me. Uh, vocally, I do actually hear Catherine O'Hara vocally, um, but I I'm going to stick with my original guess of Kate Flannery from The Office. All right, so up next, and by the way, I don't know who of these people is, is getting voted off. I only know one of the two unmaskings so far. Um, which is the lovebird. So we'll get to him in just a moment. But uh, up next is the ugly sweater. He said, uh, one person helped me uh, tap into my inner Optimus Prime, and that is my wife. And we see a uh, sign. They're like at a like a clothing store, or whatever. And it's her. Her sign says, "Crochet Couture." He said, "We couldn't be more opposite at first. I was consignment, and she was Couture." Uh, and we see a private plane at that point. He says, I was on top of the clouds and she didn't even know who I was. At that point, we see a price tag with a fire um, on, the, on the tag, like a fire sale kind of thing. Um, she built me up brick by brick. And we saw a stop sign as well. And he sang Brick House by the Commodores. I guess that was part of one of the Transformers movies. Um, and so the guesses for the panel, Lionel Richie from Jenny, um, which Nick pointed out, you know, that would be a person singing their own song. Lionel Richie led the Commodores, so he was the original singer of Brick House. Um, however, uh, we have not yet had that happen, but a lot of times people have thought, oh, it could be this person and they're singing this song to throw us off. You know, it's, it's that person's song. So though we've never had it, we have certainly had guesses from the panel that it's the, the person who originally sang the song. Um, but in addition to Lionel Richie, we had Charlie Wilson again from Robin uh, and then Smokey Robinson from Rita. Uh, the, and the post song clue, by the way, uh, is that he's won a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, so look, last time I said Charlie Wilson, I thought that was a good guess. I'm not sure if I would have come up with that on my own, but I liked Robin's uh, thought process there. This week did uh, nothing really to persuade me otherwise uh so i am sticking with charlie wilson for this one um the ugly sweater i i think he's definitely got a lot of these clues i'm not sure what the um uh, you know look i'm not super versed in the the gap bands uh history i know you dropped the bomb on me it was a big hit for them uh i don't know if they have a song about fire or something but um yeah, I mean, certainly they were one of the hottest R&B bands of the, the 70s and the early 80s. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll say Charlie Wilson still uh, from the Gap Band. All right, Lovebird is next. Um, and this is the first unmasking. So after we do this, we'll go to the Take It Off and then talk about uh, the other two performers. I don't know which of them uh, or maybe one of these other ones we've already talked about is going to be unmasked. But uh, Lovebird says he was obsessed with Transformers. Uh, growing up. So it makes sense that he is on Transformers Night. Uh, and he identifies with them because he, uh, they are hiding in plain sight just like I was. And at that point, we see um, a camera, like a TV camera, with a sticker that says 24-7 on it. So we're thinking a reality show contestant. Um, he said, uh, the world got to know me as someone I wasn't. But I was celebrated, so I ran with it. We saw a checkered flag at that point, like you would see at a NASCAR race, I guess. Um, and then we saw the Golden Popcorn, which is an MTV Movie Award. He said, the truth is what set me free. I've helped people from uh, courthouses to White Houses. And uh, he sang All That You Are by the Goo Goo Dolls. That was uh, definitely one of the Transformers movies. And then he says, uh, his, or his post on Clue, rather, is he has made TV history before. Um, and so the initial guesses from the uh, panel, um, 
Well, I guess, yeah, I guess everybody stuck with what their initial guess was. So we'll just go to when they uh, announced he would be leaving and then the final guesses. So uh, Robin went with someone we have not heard from yet uh, or heard about, and that is Josh Dumel. I do believe he was guessed in a previous season or two, but uh, Robin came up with that one. We have not heard that yet for Lovebird. Rita uh, went with something she said earlier in the evening, and that is The Situation from Jersey Shore. Mike Sorrentino, I think, is his name, but she just referred to him as The Situation, of course. Um, Ken, doing his, you know, idiotic guesses that he gets paid to do, said this is The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. I mean, come on. Um, and then Jenny, uh, earlier in the evening, was between two people. She thought it could be Nick Vile or Colton Underwood, but her final guess was Colton Underwood because of the... Um, you know, getting to know me as someone I wasn't, I was hiding in plain sight, uh, all of that. And that's where I was with it. I, when group A first performed, I thought Colton Underwood and nobody had said it. Um, they were guessing other sports people, but I thought all of these clues about, they were like romantic clues, um, you know, following my heart, but, um, you know, not being true to myself kind of thing. Um, all of my decisions have been because of love, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so I was thinking Colton Underwood. I still believe this is Colton Underwood. Here's the thing, though. I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't know what this guy looks like. So he's going to be on mass. I think he was a football player, right? Um, I think that was kind of kind of the thing. That's why he was on The Bachelor. And then it came out after the fact that he was gay. Um, so I know, like, the news stories about him. Um, but to see him, I don't know. But I, I believe this is Colton Underwood uh, of The Bachelor. Let's see who it is. It's not The Rock. I can tell you that right now. But let's see. Yes, Colton Underwood. I got another one. And that was a first impression guess, too. So that's good. Uh, I have not had a great season so far, but now I am three for six. I've reached the 50% mark, so that's, that's not bad. Um, Jenny was right. Jenny probably does, I think, still hold the record for most correct guesses. Let's see. My entire life playing football, I never got to like experience it with the arts and the music and theater. So thank you for letting me okay go back in the past and explore that creative. Yeah, he said he's never been able to explore sort of the, that creative side of himself. All right, I mean he sang fine, but it was pretty obvious uh, that he was going to be the one unmasked, right? Uh, so all right, well we have two other singers here. Uh, I'm gonna watch further and see. Uh, what character is unmasked next? Because if it's one of these two, we'll kind of stop again and then go to the unmasking. But uh, we've got what? The goldfish and the koala are left. Well, our wild card, the koala, is actually going to be the one unmasked. So we'll keep going here in uh, the order that uh, the show happens. So goldfish will be next, and then we'll talk about uh, the koala. So goldfish, uh, she said the most transformative moments are breakups, still on the, the Transformers theme. Uh, I always thought I'd marry young like my mom. And we saw an, a Christmas globe, like a snow globe at that point. Um, but dating in Hollywood is hard, and I wasn't always lucky. You have to see your exes everywhere. Uh, and then we saw a vampire bat at that point. Um, she says having run-ins uh, turn into TikToks was very awkward uh and then she sang baby come back by the players that was uh, part of one of the one of the movies uh and then her post song clue was um that she has poured her soul and tears into her work uh so the guesses from the panel include sarah highland from modern family she was uh also in uh the vampire um what was a vampire academy movie uh Chris, they were all on that. The vampire bat really like stuck with a lot of people. Uh, Kristen Stewart, which uh, obviously Twilight, um, and then Nina Dobrev from uh, Rita, who was on the Vampire Diaries. Um, and listen, this is intriguing because the song she sang the first time was "Vampire" by Olivia Rodrigo. So there's clearly some kind of a vampire theme. Okay, so last time I wasn't quite sure where to go. I forget what I even guessed. Was it Carly Rae Jepsen? Maybe. Um, there were a lot of interesting guesses from the panel last time, including Leah Michelle and Lucy Hale, um, and Carly Rae Jepsen was, was mentioned, and that's who I was kind of thinking, but you guys in the comments were all like, no, no, this has got to be Vanessa Hudgens, Vanessa Hudgens, High School Musical, okay, um, look, I was a little bit outside the, the High School Musical range, um, I was already well into my, at least 20s when that came out, 
Um, right? Yeah. So, uh, early, maybe even early thirties or late twenties, early thirties. But anyway, um, I know of certainly high school musical one, I was working at a video store at the time. And that was one of the movies that, you know, we could just kind of put on the TV and stuff. So I, I know some of the songs, whatever, but it was, wasn't something I really paid attention to. Um, and I really, I really don't know much about Vanessa Hudgens. So that's why she wasn't kind of crossing my mind. But so with all the vampire clues, I looked up her discography, because uh, she did have an album come out. There, there were no like songs about vampires on there, and I looked up her uh, filmography for movies, and I, I didn't really notice anything that had anything to do with vampires. So that part is really throwing me. However, she did have a Christmas uh, movie that she did. She starred in and executive produced. So, okay, that could be for the, the Christmas Globe. <sighs> I, I, <sighs> all right, here's the thing. I don't want to go against you guys in the comments because it probably is Vanessa Hudgens, but you have to help me out with these with these clues tonight. Um, I, I I really don't know what the vampire uh, thing is. Ha did she have a super famous breakup? Like was she dating Zac Efron or something from High School Musical? Um, I don't know enough about her, so I'm actually gonna. I, this is stupid because I'm sure it's Vanessa Hudgens, right? Um, but I don't know enough about her. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I, the, the whole vampire thing is very interesting. I do think Sarah Hyland probably is going to do this show at some point. I have guessed her before. I forget whether it was... I think it might have been when um, the gal who plays Erica Goldberg was on. Um, which makes sense because they're both part of the ABC you know, family. Um, they both had kind of very famous you know, family sitcoms on at the same time on the same network. So a lot of the clues were similar, but it turned out to be... Uh, not Sarah Hyland. I'm not going to go with Sarah Hyland, though. Um, I, I don't know. It's probably Vanessa Hudgens. So you guys have to tell me in the comments how these clues match up. For now, I, I don't know. I'm just going to say Nina Dobrev, I guess. Uh, it's wrong. I know. But I, I would rather... At least I can match her to some of these clues. Um, whereas uh, Vanessa Hudgens, I just can't. I really don't know enough about her. So you guys tell me, uh, why I'm wrong in the comments and how you guys figured out that it was Vanessa Hudgens. Okay. So finally we have the koala. And like I said, uh, they're actually getting voted off as well. So we'll just go through this, uh, you know, as, as it was, um, we saw the Colorado welcoming sign, uh, at the beginning of the clue package. He says, I'm kind of shy. And I wasn't a superstar material at first. I avoided interviews. Then I broke out with my first hit and I was forced to speak and everything changed. We saw TV at that point. Uh, he says, now you can't get me to shut up. Um, and we see uh, sort of a belt, what looks like kind of a wrestling belt with a sun, a picture of a sun on it. We also see a sword and a cowboy hat at some point in the clue package. And he sings, Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears of Fears. That was from the Bumblebee movie, uh, because that took place in the 80s. So a lot of 80s tunes came from that. Uh, that's probably, by the way, uh, my favorite of all of the Transformers movies. It's not even probably. It's absolutely, most definitely my favorite of all the Transformers movies is Bumblebee. You should check it out. It's a prequel, so that's why it takes place in the 80s. Uh, but Haley Steinfeld stars in it, which I always love her. So, uh, Okay, and then the clue... Uh, afterwards is that he is on a short list with some of the greatest of all time. So everybody on the panel was thinking this is a sports star. We heard Michael Irvin, Deion Sanders, and Terry Crews. Unfortunately, I am thinking, I wrote down somebody that Jenny later said, I was hoping nobody would say it so that if I'm right, it's my own. Um, but the only thing that stuck out to me was the Colorado clue at the beginning. Um, now Robin was all about the cowboy hat. He was like, okay, maybe this is a Dallas cowboy, uh, whatever. But uh, you know, Der T uh, Terry Crews definitely did not play for the Cowboys. He played for like five different teams, but that wasn't one of them. Uh, Michael Irvin, I guess did, but I don't really know who that is. Um, so I was stuck on the Colorado clue. So I thought, okay, look, I don't know a lot about sports, but I know who does commentary and stuff for the most part. Um, and I was also trying to think, okay, who has played famously, for the Denver Broncos, since we saw that Colorado sign at the beginning. And by the way, Cowboy Hat could certainly be for the Broncos as well, even though they're not in Texas, but, you know, bucking Bronco, a Cowboy rides a, a Bronco. So I think the Cowboy Hat still matches up here. Um, and so the final guess is from the panel. They stuck with, with what they said earlier. Rita said Terry Crews, Ken said Deion Sanders, Robin said Michael Irvin, and Jenny, gosh darn it, said Shannon Sharp. 
That is exactly who I think this is. I wrote it down up here on the side. You can't really see it, but it says Shannon Sharp with a question mark. Um, before Jenny said it, um, I don't know if that's who this is, but he is certainly a very famous Denver Bronco, and he's on TV because he does commentary. Jenny said she that he hosted uh, or co-hosted one of the New Year's Eve things with her. I don't usually watch uh, her on New Year's Eve, um, but I, I mean... Yeah, th that all makes sense to me. Um, he He's a commentator. He was a Denver Bronco for a long time. Um, you know, like he said, now you can't get me to shut up. I, I, I think, I wish Jenny didn't say it because I really, really wanted it to be my my own idea. But uh, but anyway, I, I believe this is Shannon Sharp. And by the way, if it is, if it's any kind of football player, the vocal was really good. Like for, for an athlete, that's one of the better vocals we've had, I think, uh, on, on this show. So let's see who the koala is. Is it Shannon Sharp? It'd be great if it is. I'd be four for seven or something. Let's see. Oh, it's not. I've not heard of this person. Demarcus Ware. Okay, I don't know who this person is. Demarcus Ware. So I never would have gotten that. All right, let's see. Nick says it's the man. That tells me nothing. All right. I'll have to look him up. Yeah, he sings great. I mean, I I am shocked. Yeah, nobody knew that. Okay. All right, he sacked quarterbacks. Well, I was thinking when he said, uh, "Then I broke out with my first hit." I was thinking, okay, so is this, uh, you know, like what what kind of position does he play? Um, you know, I figured it was somebody who was sacking people or, you know, I don't even know the positions really. Is that a tackle? Is that what that's called? Um, but anyway, Terry Crews didn't match up for that either. So, um, okay, well, there you go. I never would have gotten that. It's another another person I've not really ever heard of, DeMarcus Ware. Um, well, that puts me back down below 50%. This is... This has been a tough season, to be completely honest. So uh, I'm now, what, three, four, seven. Yikes. All right. Well, hopefully we can we can get it back next time. So I, I imagine next week we're going to have Group A again, and we're going to do um, two more eliminations, and then we'll get it down. Right? I don't know. May I? They've screwed this up so much by throwing Kevin Hart into the mix with Group A. Uh, but I do believe next week will be Group A. Uh, I don't I imagine we'll do maybe two unmaskings again. I don't know. But uh, in any event, we'll see. Please let me know in the comments how you match Vanessa Hudgens up uh, with all the vampire clues. Please, please, please. Uh, all right. And that will do it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.